Hi there, welcome to week eight of Angular and talking about web apps. This week we're gonna be focused on a number of things. We're gonna be talking about, uh, we're gonna look at data, how to integrate data and services into our Angular app. How do we get data out of a, a web API, REST API and into our app so we can consume it. And we're gonna be talking about how to build single page applications where we have URLs and portions of the URL that are gonna hold state for um, various pages and components in our app. So I thought that what I would do is I would take the app that we've been working on. Last time we worked through building this app here and I thought what I would do is I would start to split it up so that instead of um, all being built on the client side on the browser that we would build out a server component. We would integrate some REST API routes and we would do routing in the Angular app and look at how to connect all of that up. So essentially what I want to get to is I want to be able to, uh, I don't know how well you can see this, but I'm going to be adding URL support so that when we, you know, jump between different bridges, we have the ability to say I'm at this bridge or this bridge or this bridge, and we can keep track of that state in the URL within our single page web app. Okay, so that's where I want to get to. And I'm going to do that over uh, the course of the next uh, series of videos. But before I did that, I thought it might be useful because we're going to be talking about routing and we're going to be using a bunch of uh, DOM APIs under the covers. I would just do a quick discussion about how single page applications and how frameworks like React and Angular and Vue and all the others, how do they actually achieve this? because what a single page application is doing is it's essentially it's hijacking the URL and it's allowing you to make it look like you're serving URLs deep into a web server somewhere, but you're actually indexing into your JavaScript app. How does this work? How do the browsers make this possible? So I wanna to talk to you about a couple of DOM APIs. Uh, the location API, window.location, and the history API, window.history. And I want to talk to you about how they use URLs to achieve what they do. So if you'll bear with me for a moment, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, which is URLs. And uh, URLs are extremely complicated. It, it's funny because they seem like the most basic thing in the world. But as you start building out complex web apps, you're going to encounter more and more situations where you really need to understand how URLs work how to take advantage of different components of URLs and how to integrate them both on the server side and the client side. Okay, so a real quick discussion of what this looks like. So what I have here is I have a page up and into the Angular docs on routing and I have set up the URL to have some interesting bits to it. So programmatically, if I wanna work with this URL, I have a number of tools I can do. So that first API we were talking about is window.location. So if I type, window.location, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me back a location object which has information about the current page that I'm on. And so it takes the URL and it parses it out for me. So the first thing you wanna know about URLs is you never wanna parse URLs by hand. You, URLs are too complicated for you to write a regular expression and hope to extract all these different pieces. There are really good APIs built into the browser. I'll show you another one in a second for being able to parse. So there's full HTML, uh, or sorry, full URL parsers built in. Okay, so I have a URL here. The URL looks like this, and it's not a super complicated URL, but it has a number of parts to it. So let's just make sure we're clear on what some of these things are, because I'm gonna refer to them later on, or you'll hear people talk about them. Okay, so the first thing that we encounter is the protocol. So our protocol here is HTTPS, and after the protocol, we have the host, angular.io, and if we take those two things together, we get what's called the origin. And this is gonna come up later in our discussions when we're building our web API. The entire model of the web security is based on origins. So the origin of this particular site is https colon slash slash angular.io. And it's not present here, you can't see it because I don't have a port, but if there was a port, the port would also be part of the origin. So if you were on port 1234 
or for you know port 80 or whatever port you're on that makes up part of the origin so remember that so when someone talks about an origin for an app or an origin for a resource this is what they're talking about is the protocol the host or the domain and whatever port that that's running on okay so what comes next so after the after all of this we have this bit here which is the path name so the path name looks a lot like a POSIX file system. So a file system in Unix, and it could be, but doesn't have to be mapped one-to-one -one with anything in the file system on the remote machine. Okay, so we have an origin, we have a path name. What's What comes next? So the next bit we have is any number of optional query parameters in the query string. Uh, so the query string is part of the URL. So when you are thinking about creating a URL, if you update or modify the value that's inside the query string, it's going to trigger a reload of the page. It's going to have to go back to the server and it's going to have to ask for this new resource. So remember this, that the query is, is part of the full URL and if you change it, you have a different URL. We often use this as a way to um, bust through cache limitations. So if you need to re-request something and you wanna force the browser to go back and get a new version rather than using the current one, people will often, um, can, you know, they'll add on a, a little cache busting string, which could be like the current time, current date and time or something like that. Okay, the last thing that we have on here is we have a hash or what's called a fragment. So the fragment has this hashtag at the beginning. It often corresponds to an ID in the page. So if you have, if you want to be able to scroll through the page, like on this page, if I jump to a different section, you'll see that my, up at the top here, my hash has changed. And if I were to window.location.hash, you'll see that my hash is going to correspond with the hash that I'm on here. So the hash or this fragment is something that's only part of what's going on in the browser. It's a it's a, an index into the current resource. And it could be in a page, but it could also be in a video. It might be a time sequence in an audio file or um, a portion of a video, or there's all sorts of ways that this fragment syntax gets used in different, um, in different pages. So if I take, so when I have window dot, location.href so this is my my url window.location.origin uh, location dot path name uh, window.location dot how are you going to give me the um, search yeah uh, no, because I took it off of this one. I don't have one defined on here, but I do have my um, hash. Okay, so we have this way to chop up a URL and work with it. And if I was interested in taking this URL, just because we're talking about it, if I ever needed to parse a URL, I can say a new URL and I can give it a string like this and the browser will parse it for me. It'll give me back a URL object, which is very similar to what the location object is that we're getting there. Okay. Okay. So our topic is routing. So let's, let's talk about how, how the history API comes into play here. So what you have is you have this window location and window history. Let me show you window history, window.history. These objects are how Angular or React or any of these things, how they manage to do routing when you're without leaving the page. So what history gives you is it gives you a stack. It gives you a stack of all of the different um, history states or all the different pages that you were on. And for each of these, whenever you go back or forward through that stack, it pops off an entry and it keeps track of certain pieces of information. So you can see, for example, that I have a history stack, which is has six elements in it right now on this page. And you can see that at the current 
location in the stack where I am right now, there's actually some state information. So it looks like Angular has put some state information in there about scroll positions. Okay, so maybe it's keeping track of where I am scrolled up and down in the page. So as a developer, you can put anything you want into the history and you have a couple of ways to do this. So window.history.pushState, what push state takes, it takes three arguments. So the first one is an object and that object can have any key and any value that you want to put in there. So if you wanted to keep track of any kind of state that your that your page that you're about to load needs in order to render itself, you can stick that data in here. You can't put tons and tons of data in here. There's a limitation. I can't remember what the exact size is, but this value is going to get saved to disk. So even if the user closes their, um, you know, shuts the, the browser and comes back, or the, if, they have any, if they have any state for the back and forward state of this particular page, when they go back and forward, it's going to read that out of disk. You're still going to have access to it. So the first thing is an object that we put in there and it has, you know, um, whatever data that we want to store. The second thing you have is a title and most browsers will ignore this, but you, you have a place to put a title for the current page that you're about to put in there. And the last one is the really interesting one. This is a URL. So what you want to, you know, you want to change the URL so that instead of saying slash, so if I was currently on, right now I'm on slash guide slash um, router, like that. If I wanted to be on router two or something like this, this API allows me to update and say I'm on a different page. So like the simplest case, if I said I wanted to be on router two, um, I forgot to close my, bear with me and we'll get this. What did I do wrong? Oh, sorry. There. So if you look now, you can see that my page hasn't changed. I'm on the same page that I was just on a second ago, but I'm now sitting on router two. And this API is really nice because what it lets me do is it lets me modify the URL, modify the history, but not necessarily modify the page. So I can have a JavaScript application that's running in this page. I can mess around with the URL and the user can mess around with the URL, put new things in there, and my application will do the right thing. So the history API, if I said window.history.back, you'll see that my location is where it was a moment ago. And if I were to say forward, um, if I said history dot forward, uh, it's not happy with me because I'm messing around with Angular's um, internal router. So I'm, I'm actually, because Angular is doing routing in this page, it's unhappy with me. Anyway, we'll make, we'll make Angular happy. So the point is you can either you can push new state into the uh, stack, so you can add another one on top. You can also replace the current state with something. So I could have a new piece of data, a new title, and a new URL. And I can, instead of adding one, I can just replace the one that I'm currently on right now. And doing so, this is super powerful because I have the ability now to modify the URL, but I can also keep track of state information for each URL. So imagine you've got the ID of an element that you need to load or whatever it is, you can, you can keep this extra state both in the URL itself as a parameter, so maybe it's part of the path name or something like that, or it's part of the query string, but you can also stuff this data down into the, um, into the state, and it doesn't have to be visible to the user, so in this case, like scroll position or some other uh, UI 
feature that you want to keep track of. Anyway, we could go on and on with this. I don't want to say too much more because I want to look at how Angular uses this. But I wanted to, and I, in general, I want you to understand what's going on underneath Angular, what's going on underneath React, so that when you're, um, when you're working on these apps, it doesn't feel so magical. It's, it's something that you understand how, how they're making use of HTML5 DOM APIs in order to have this, have this happen. Okay, so I'm gonna pause here. In the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on making the changes that are necessary to make a routed app, to make a REST API, to rework everything so that the state comes over the wire from a network service and we use it inside of our app as a, as a data service. So that's what we're gonna move into and I'll see you in the next video.